Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a wife, a busy mom of three, and the founder of the cutting edge supplement brand, Accelerated Health Products. This podcast is more than just a source of information. It's a community for you and for those looking to optimize their health. I release new episodes live every Monday and Tuesday. So remember to subscribe and add to your playlist so you never miss a show. I usually add a third one on Thursdays. Join me also for my free health group coaching on Telegram. There's no censorship and I there's no downside. I answer all of your questions. I post things on a daily basis. It's a wealth of knowledge and it keeps you on track. The details can be found on my website, sarahbantahealth.com. My goal, and I need your help, is to reach everyone who needs me with my message of healing. Help me share this podcast with a few of your friends and loved ones. And we can together empower each other on our journeys to optimal health. I am continuing on my own journey and learning things every day. And the more I learn, the more I want to learn. And today we are talking about a topic close to my heart the health implications of radiation and toxicity. Guys, this weight loss, this weight gain, these diseases, it's not about carbs. It's not about fat. It's not about a not enough protein. It's all this new stuff that's going on in this decade. And the amount of toxins, heavy medical metals, chemicals, GMOs, glyphosate, and endocrine disruptors have increased exponentially. And it's easy to see them because they're all visible in our food, in our air, in our products. However, that one threat that we can't see, that I'm being exposed to right now as I'm talking to you on my computer and I've got my iPhone right here, is radiation. And people don't wanna face the fact that radiation could be the cause of their unexplained health issues because we're so dependent on this technology. I myself, if my power goes out, I feel like I'm going to have an anxiety attack. I can't work. I can't do anything. Where's my phone? My phone's not going to work. Or maybe the um, I can't charge it. How long is my battery going to last? We are so dependent. With that being said, acknowledgement of what is going on and taking the steps to minimize its effect on the body will help alleviate the damage to your health. Um, I have to think about like my mom's generation, my parents' generation in general, there was no obesity back then. There wasn't a lot of these health issues that we're talking about now. The rates of cancer were much lower, Um, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, brain fog, all of that stuff wasn't really going on like it is today. Fertility issues, all of that. Did they have a lot stronger willpower? Is that why they were thinner and didn't have the obesity? No. In fact, I think I have a lot stronger willpower than my parents ever did. It's not a lack of willpower. It's all of this stuff that's coming in on us. So let's first start with what is radiation. It's the emission of energy as electromagnetic waves or as moving subatomic particles, especially high energy particles that cause ionization. And this energy can take various forms. Um, it, It encompasses radio waves used for communication, microwaves used in cooking and communication. I am laughing because um, here I am, you know, health guru. I used to microwave corn dogs for my son when he was a toddler. That was me. I didn't know the damage of microwaves. I'm sure even if you are not on a health path, you know that microwaving corn dogs is probably not the best thing for a toddler. That was me. So microwaves, don't use your microwave. Infrared radiation. 
and that's like heat, right? So some of this radiation is good, some's bad. Visible light, the range of wavelengths visible to the human eye. You've got ultraviolet radiation, which is beyond the visible light spectrum and with effects on skin and biological tissues. You've got alpha particles, which consist of two protons and two neutrons. You have beta particles, electrons or positrons emitting or emitted from a nucleus. Neutrons, subatomical particles found in the nucleus of atoms. And protons, positive charged um, subatomic particles. So those are the types of particle radiation. You've got ionizing radiation. Radiation that is with sufficient energy to remove tightly bound electrons from atoms, creating ions, and that includes X rays, gamma rays, um, you know, and then you, that's the CT scans and the the jet stream. You've got the non ionizing radiation, and that's what this is: our cell phones. Um, you've got nuclear radiation, which is going on in our world today. And even though we don't know it, it's there. There's a lot of things going on. The nuclear power plants, radioactive decay. There's natural background radiation. So constant low level radiation originating from natural sources, cosmic rays, um, certain minerals in the Earth's crust. And then you've got artificial sources of radiation, like generated by uh, humans, um, x-rays, the industrial processes in the nuclear power plant. So what are the biggest radiation threats today? 5G. So over the pandemic, they were rolling out the 5G and we were all in our homes. So we didn't notice that there, we, there were these towers going up and then they're painted brown with some green leaves on them to look like palm trees to make us not really realize it. But 5G or fifth generation is the latest generation of the mobile um, network technology. It represents a significant advancement over its predecessor, the 4G, offering faster data speeds, lower latency, increased network capacity. It's amazing, right? And that's why we're so anxious for things and we need things right away because we never have to wait for anything because things are so quick. Well, 4G used or uses 6 gigahertz on the radio frequency spectrum. 5G uses a much higher frequency, 3 to 300 gigahertz radio waves, and is using new and untested technology in terms of safety to allow for higher data transmission capacity. Um, this is going, there are lawsuits at the Supreme Court level that we don't even know about going on with this 5G. So just be aware. Due to the way 5G works, it needs antennas to be 100 to 300 meters apart, which is far closer than the 2G, 3G, or 4G technology using lower frequency waves. The signal's going to be weaker with 5G since the wavelengths cannot penetrate buildings. So to work around this, the 5G networks will use smart, smaller uh, cell stations that scramble, unscramble, and redirect packets of data and, and on a no in, interference, sorry, path back to us. In other words, many more towers are going to be put up and you're going to just see them every 100 to 300 meters apart. While 5G is not expected to replace 4G entirely, it's in anticipated to coexist. So the potential harmful risks are on the rise. And I can tell you, I'm not even on 5G. There's a way to turn it off on your cell phone, just so you know. Um, but if I'm looking at my phone too long, my vision goes blurry, I get a headache right here, and I know it's from the radiation. Um, and and I have my little, um, little sticker on it that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So um, evidence suggests that the radiation associated with 5G is going to contribute to neurological disorders, reproductive harm, and oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is what accelerates aging and causes all of these diseases that we're seeing. So a big issue with the 5G 
It is its reliance on millimeter waves known to penetrate human tissue up to up to two millimeters. And these waves are absorbed by the corneal surface and conducted by sweat glands within the skin, posing potential health problems. The millimeter waves are linked to immune system suppression, increased cellular stress, the generation of harmful free radicals, learning deficits, the development of bacterial and antibiotic resistance. And this type of radiation has been associated with reproductive harm. And how much infertility are you guys seeing? It's huge, right? And neurological disorders. So that's anxiety, depression, autism, Alzheimer's. And we've talked a lot about mental disorders, anxiety and depression. Yes, it's from being on um, social media too much. Yes, it's from being isolated and from the processed foods that we're eating and all of the other things, but it's also from this radiation. So then you've got Fukushima. So a tsunami damaged Fukushima um, nuclear power plant and it's released radioactive wastewater into the sea. The plant began the first wastewater release that we know about last August in 2023. And I actually did a, a podcast on it. So go back to listen. And it will continue for years. China is even saying, hey, wait a second, we don't want any of your of your seafood or anything that's coming from your waters. So about 1.33 million tons of radioactive wastewater is stored in about 1000 tanks at the plant. And it has accumulated since the plant was crippled um, by a, an earthquake and a tsunami that struck northeastern Japan in 2011. Fukushima contamination is across the world. So it's not just in the Asias. We're not safe here in California or in the United States. The seafood and the other sea-based foods like kelp are distributed globally, meaning we are all eating this contaminated food. I love seafood, but you better believe that I'm really careful where, where, where I get it from. And that kelp and seaweed that is so loaded with iodine that's so good for you, it could have radio contamination in it. So be careful. The radiation is also carried through the jet stream across the world. So as you're flying, because the pilots like to, to fly in the jet stream to keep um, the energy costs down, there's more exposure. Then you have Chernobyl. This accident in 1986 resulted in steam, ex uh, steam explosion and fires that released 5% of the radioactive re reactor core into the environment with radioactive ma material spreading across many parts of Europe. And then you've got of course, like we've talked about, the increased adv advanced technology, smartphones, cell phones, computers, smart meters, other technologies, all of it, right? If we just had one, it might not be a big deal, but I've got um, a phone and two computers, and then we've got, I don't have a smart meter on my home because I opted out and you are able to do that. I recommend it, but 5G tower down the street, we've got it everywhere. So I'm being exposed and I'm not going to move to the middle of nowhere just to avoid radiation because I am a human being and I want to live in society. And so we have to learn to live with these things. Flying. So the hot radioisotopes from Fukushima and the other nuclear leaks rise up into the jet stream which in turn distributes these radioisotopes as black rain or radioactive rain throughout the planet indiscriminately across all seven continents within six days. So pilots, like I mentioned, are deliberately flying into the jet streams to save energy and um, are being exposed even more. So all that good news. What are the symptoms to look out for? Skin changes, and I've seen it on my own body, skin reactions, rashes, redness, irritation, drying, peeling, even blistering or ulceration, just fatigue. I mean, I flew the other day, and at the end of the day, I felt like I was hit by a truck. I didn't do any more working out or a lot, expend much more energy. I was just wiped out. Radiation therapy, especially in cancer treatments, often causes fatigue, but just in general, any radiation can. I mean, after I'm exposed to um, my big computer, which I do my podcasts on, 
I am more exhausted than when I'm working on my laptop because it emits less radiation. I have to go outside and go for a walk and be in the sun to re-energize my body if I'm around the, the radiation too long. You can actually have nausea or vomiting, um, particularly if the radiation is directed at the abdominal area. Hair loss, how many of you have complained about hair loss, right? And there's a lot of reasons for the hair loss right now. You've got the spike protein and um, just toxins in general, general in the food supply, lack of nutri nutrition. And I talk about that in a podcast and on my website if you're looking for solutions for hair loss. Um, changes in blood cell count. So radiation can affect the bone marrow, leading to a decrease in red and white blood cells. And this may result in anemia, increased susceptibility to infections, and a higher risk of bleeding. Digestive issues. How many of you are complaining about digestive issues? A lot of you. Radiation directed at the abdominal area can cause diarrhea, cramping, changes in bowel habits, cognitive symptoms, like we mentioned, the anxiety, the depression, ADHD, difficult concentrating, um, reduced fertility. Radiation exposure to the, the reproductive organs may affect fertility in both men and women, and this can be temporary or permanent. It causes lower sex hormones, lower libido, increased levels of spontaneous abortion. I know that the level of testosterone in young men at the age of 20 is like 50% of what it used to be. And that's just a sign. That's when they're supposed to be in their prime, right? Increased risk of secondary cancers, damage to organs and tissues. So depending on the location of the radiation treatment, you might have damage to those organs and um, have long-term complications. You have increased oxidative stress. Now, we're going to get into more about the oxidative stress and how that's actually causing more um, weight gain issues than eating too many calories or the carbs or the fat. But increased oxidative stress coming from radiation is going to lead to all chronic disease and accelerated aging. So the whole goal is to reduce oxidative stress for longevity. Radiation attacks the DNA of our cells, which in turn produces cancers, mutations, um, and, and then that's going to cause mutations in generations to come. So what you're being exposed to is going to affect your kids and your kids' kids. Excess calcium production. And you might think, oh, calcium is a good thing. No. Radiation produces excessive intracellular calcium and excessive calcium signaling. That is not a good thing. That is associated with disease and cancers. Autism and ADHD. While in utero and shortly after birth, it may cause those diseases as well. So that's radiation. But then we're coupling it with all of the other toxins that we're being exposed to. Air pollution. I live in beautiful Southern California and on a blue day, you could have um, the chemtrails and the, they're spraying us, right? Or the smog. You look at the smog as you're flying into Los Angeles and the blanket of smog. We're breathing in that air. The air pollution's coming from the emissions of vehicles, industrial processes, fossil fuels, all of it, right? You're breathing that in and those are horrible toxins that your body has to detox and deal with. Water contamination from polluted water sources um, that are exposed to harmful chemicals, heavy metals, pesticides, pathogens. You could have waterborne illnesses. You also have water just being treated with fluoride. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. Fluoride is kicking out that precious iodine out of your body. That will cause disease. Processed foods, and we're really going to dive deep into the linoleic acid and the PUFAs that are so heavily um, laden in these processed foods. And that is what is causing unexplained weight gain, not the carbs, people. Consuming these diets in high processed foods, added sugars, the high fructose corn syrup, the PUFAs, the unhealthy fats, the seed oils, 
they contribute to the conditions like high uric acid level, fatty liver, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, the brain fog, all of the brain issues, um, even, even fertility issues, right? The number one fertility issue for women is PCOS, which is connected to insulin resistance. Well, you stem that back to these toxins. Insulin resistance is not necessarily about eating too much fructose or sugar. It is about eating too many processed foods and taking in too many toxins. Radiation on its own without eating a morsel of chocolate increases your insulin resistance. This cell phone increases my insulin resistance. This can cause unexplained weight gain, people. It's not about the carbs and the sugar and the, the, the eating, whatever, whatever macro you want to talk about. There's bad, there's bad proteins and good proteins, bad fats and good fats. There's bad carbs and good carbs. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But the processed foods full of toxins, um, seed oils, they, they quickly degrade the health by causing leaky gut, even from one meal. I had this conversation with my daughter this morning or yet last night, insulin resistance, malnutrition, inflammation of the brain and the body and what they do. And this is the, this is the cornerstone of health is they steal and lower ATP and lower mitochondrial health. Your energy for your brain and body is ATP. That is what we want to focus on for longevity, for quality of health, for quality of life, and just your energy to, to live and do. And that's ATP and mitochondrial health. Processed foods and all of these toxins lower ATP and lower mitochondrial health. They cause autoimmune disease and so much more. Heavy metals, lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, all can accumulate in the body. When I first hit my health crisis um, and I was at my rock bottom, I was through the roof in aluminum um, and mercury and lead, literally off the charts. And I, I felt crazy. And that's that can be part of um, a heavy, heavy metal toxicity. It can lead to neurological damage, kidney problems, developmental disorders, Fluoride, bromide, chlorine, displace that needed precious iodine in the body, leading to hormonal imbalances, hypothyroid, brain fog, depression, high toxicity. Depression is typically caused by hypothyroidism. So if you're experiencing depression, go get your thyroid panel done, not just TSH, the full panel. So those are the other toxins. And then you've got the spike protein, right? So over the last three years, that has infiltrated into all of our bodies. I don't care who you are. As a result, so many things are being disrupted. Excess water retention, disrupted sulfation pathways. So what does that mean? Foods with sulfur like egg yolks and garlic, onions, broccoli, cauliflower, we used to be able to eat them 10 years ago. I'd have a bowl of broccoli and feel great. And if now if I eat it, I feel inflamed and have a ton of water retention because my detox pathways for sulfur have been disrupted from the spike protein and all of these other toxins. Then it's also disrupted oxalate metabolism. So oxalates, are spinach, almonds, um, kale, Swiss chard, berries, chocolate, all of that has been disrupted. The spike protein has made it even worse. Now, GMOs, glyphosate have made the sulfur and oxalate detox pathways worsened, but then the spike protein has exacerbated that effect. Then you have increased amyloid produ production. Amyloids are little proteins that don't get broken down into amino acids to build our muscles in our brain, and they get deposited in our tissues and our, and our brain, causing Alzheimer's and dementia and um, can stir up the gut pathogens in our gut. So just by the spike protein, regardless of what you're eating, you will have an increase in amyloid production disrupted fat and protein metabolism. The liver is being backed up because it's got all of these toxins from the radiation, and all the toxins we just mentioned. And then the spike protein is causing that 
that disruption in the sulfur and the oxalates and the amyloid um, detox pathways. So it's having a hard time breaking down the good fats and the good protein because our, our liver's just like, I give up. You're asking me to do way too much. You have increased insulin dysregulation, increased weight gain, increased inflammation, increased hormonal imbalances, infertility, estrogen dominance, and worsen menopausal and PMS symptoms. And I've seen this in my own family. PMS symptoms have gotten a lot worse over the last three years. Same people, same good diet, actually a better diet now, um, but worsen symptoms. And that's from the spike protein. Pesticides and chemicals. So exposures to these, and you know, I've had, I talked, we talked about this last night, why it's so important to be eating organic nowadays. Back 20 years ago, eh, kind of, yeah, it was important, but now it's essential. This exposure to these pesticides, they're in our foods, our personal care products, our household items. They could um, spark an onset of any genetic disease. They back up the liver. They increase estrogen dominance. So if you're a man and you've got man boobs and you can't build any muscle, You've got too much estrogen in your in your testosterone's in the tank. And if you're a woman and you're on a low calorie diet, low carb diet, and you keep gaining weight, that could be these toxins that we're talking about. GMOs and glyphosate. They are used in the food supply. And this is what is causing all the issues with our gut and our weight gain. They cause leaky gut malabsorption of the good nutrients that we're taking in and disrupt the sulfate, sulfation detox pathways. This is why our sulfur detox pathways have been hijacked in the first place and our oxalate metabolism. Industrial chemicals and toxins. Um, they, uh, asbestos, the dioxins, I did a podcast on dioxins, if you're interested in that, um, make sure you go back and look, but they lead to cancer and chronic illnesses. And then smoking, I don't think I really need to talk about that. Alcohol, excessive alcohol increases estrogen dominance, and it can le lead to liver damage and mental health issues. But that's a that's a choice, right? I'm I'm not going to talk much about smoking or alcohol, but these other things, the microplastics, um, and all of these other toxins, they are just bombarding our systems. So I just said a whole lot, right? They're coming from everywhere: our air, our food, our personal products, these computers. I'm, I'm we're in front of. Um, we are under threat. So yes. It is going to take supplements and a very specific diet to feel good and increase your ATP and your mitochondrial health so that you can live life, enjoy it, not be depressed, wake up with energy and motivation. And it's not easy. And I have complaints in my own household. I get it. But if you want to feel your best, you have to you have to deal with this stuff in in the world that we are. We're not unless you're going to go live in Alaska or in some far off place that's away from all of these toxins. And I know a lot of people that do that. You can do that, and maybe I will one day. But for right now, I am going to be following the protocol that I'm talking about. So I put together the radi the accelerated radiation and heavy metals detox cleanse. And these are supplements that I take daily. They are not just a 30 day cleanse. You can do it for 30 days. <clears throat> these are also the supplements that I recommended to a client this morning who said that their son is going to get an MRI. So for whether it's just a short term um, issue or long term longevity, these are the supplements. And the first one is the accelerated colloidal silver. <clears throat> it is the scalar silver. We just changed the name. This is the supplement that um, started my business. My son had leukemia at the age of nine, probably because the my of the microwavable um, corn dogs. I already told him that he I should be in jail um, because of the way I parented him. And thank God for the mistakes I made with him, I at least did a better job with my two daughters. But within one year, and I really didn't know much about diet, the leukemia 
the cancer cells that we saw underneath the microscope were gone. And not only that, but the cells were dark and plump and um, healthy and nutritionally full, whereas before they were they were donut holes. They had no nutrition. They were totally acidic. This formula is extremely alkaline, unlike any other silver, and it helps devitalize all foreign pathogens. It helps the body's immune system. So you have to think if your immune system is fighting something over here, then all of these other things that we're talking about, it's not going to be able to deal with, right? Um, I just had a family member in the hospital with a fever and she's been on some medications and uh, the doctors ran tons of tests trying to find the one thing that it was, was it a virus, a bacteria? Of course, they put her on an antibiotic, even though they didn't know what it was, right? They could not find one thing. And you want to know why? Because the body had multiple things going on. The liver was so backed up and so overwhelmed. It just said, I need to throw my fever up and just kill everything. So my point is, is when the immune system's strong, it can deal with all of these other things better, right? So it is extreme. The accelerated silver helps with inflammation. It reduces the acidity in the body. It helps um, with the, all of those pathogens, but it's enhanced with scalar frequencies to restore the body to homeostasis. And it goes after specific viruses that we know about. and um, it also helps clear the shock of the, me the mental and the physical shock out of the body. This is the supplement that is great for your elderly parents and your children because it tastes like water and it's super easy to take. And it's just going to keep you healthy. I can tell you through the last five years, all five of us, my three kids, my husband and I um, tested positive at least once. None of us had a symptom. The second supplement. As far as toxins and radiation goes, this is a, a must. And we're going to have Dr. David Brownstein on talking about the importance of iodine. Um, so iodine, the accelerodyne iodine, not only devitalizes foreign pathogens, the viruses, the bacteria, the fungus, parasites, but 96% of you are deficient in iodine. And that statistic came from 20 years ago. So it's probably even higher because our soils are depleted and our threats have increased like we we're talking about. Um, iodine deficiency results in only two ATP per mitochondria. So remember, we're talking about trying to improve ATP and our mitochondrial health. Iodine increases it to 36 or 38. And iodine deficiency is the number one reason for mitochondrial failure and a slow metabolism and detoxification. So with inadequate iodine intake, the thyroid gland is compromised, right? You're going to have more um, hypothyroidism and the modern diet lacks sufficient iodine. Even iodized salt offers minimal iodine and it's full of microplastics. So you're putting in more toxins as you're trying to detox with that iodine. It doesn't work. Um, and it's also um, stripped of all of the other minerals except for sodium. Iodine is necessary for the synthesis of the thyroid hormones, T3, T2, and T4, which are important for your metabolism and fat burning. And this is the only iodine that is a single atom iodine. It provides that single atom of iodine that is easily absorbed by all 100 trillion cells in the body, not just your thyroid. And you are going to, um, mo most iodine supplements only have 10 to 20% absorption, and this achieves 100%. It increases that ATP from 2 to 36 it detoxifies the cells from the heavy metals, the toxins, and the radiation that inhibit a healthy metabolism and um, uh, help with all of that disease. But this is what's really important. And this is what we're going to also talk to Dr. Brownstein about is it's displacing halogens. So what are the halogens? The fluoride, the chlorine, the bromide, 
all of those, if you are deficient in iodine, and then that chlorine, that fluoride, that bromide are going to fill those receptor sites. So when you have enough iodine and you take higher doses of iodine, like Do Dr. Brownstein and I both recommend, you're kicking out those toxins so they can't take hold of the body. And so those toxins contribute to hypothyroidism, a slow metabolism and disease. It prevents toxic overload. So by high dosing the, the iodine, it's displacing those toxins, preventing the new toxins from attaching to the cell's receptor sites. It alleviates the spike protein side effects. How many of you are still, effect, uh, still feeling those side effects from when you were sick? Um, that has been also, it, that it, it has been shown to help alleviate those symptoms. It cleans the blood. So it's helped facilitating the liver's detoxification process, eliminating the toxins associated with all of these um, side effects that we've talked about. It helps with estrogen dominance. It regulates estrogen production while also cleansing the blood of the excess estrogen. Now, this is the supplement that does not get enough attention. Accelerated Newt No More. It works with the Acceleridine Iodine. So you take your iodine three times a day. After your first morning dose, you immediately take 12 drops of this. Tastes like water right under the tongue. Super easy to do. Um, it helps negate the radiation in the body. It is a scalar charged Ormus formula. And it is the only one that I know to be as effective as, uh, as it is. It helps with nuclear fallout, smog, ionizing x-rays, commercial flying, as well as non-ionizing radiation from our smartphones and all of those. And there's no supplement like this. So for most people, I do 12 drops a day for two months, and then you do a, um, a maintenance regimen of 12 drops daily, three to four times a week. Honestly, I do it every day because of what we are exposed to. If you're traveling or you know that you went into surgery or something like that, then I would make sure that you're doing it every day. Accelerated thyroid. And you say, well, why is a thyroid supplement in your radiation and detox bundle? Well, or heavy metals detox. So your thyroid is attacked by radiation and toxins. It attracts all of it, right? So this is the most comprehensive um, natural thyroid supplement is getting a lot of people off of their thyroid medication with the, the guidance of their doctor. It combines the grass-fed thyroid glandular with essential peptides, amino acids, and the other nutrients that the thyroid needs with the Ayurvedic formula, Conchonar, which I've been taking for years, and it's known for detoxifying in, um, the thyroid and helps with water retention and that sort of thing too. But then we enhance it with scalar frequencies, for reducing emotional and physical shock from the body, re restoring thyroid health, and detoxifying the body or the thyroid from the halogens, the heavy metals, radiation, and um, balancing the thyroid and the parathyroid. So the parathyroid and the thyroid are like a teeter-totter. They work, work together. It helps with the accelerated thyroid, helps with preventing fatty liver, accelerates wound healing, strengthens your, your tissues and bones and so much more. Okay. So then you've got the accelerated detox powder, the new formula. I honestly cannot get enough of it. It has chitosan in it now, which is known to help with fat loss, lowering cholesterol and helping with detoxification even further. But this blend of six organic detoxifying ingredients, dimitaceous earth, um, Micronized zeolite, um, activated charcoal, MAGO7, and the ketosun, ketosun, and it is enhanced with scalar frequencies to help enhance the detoxification. So what it does is as you're kicking out all the toxins from the iodine, the newton more, and the silver, the detox powder soaking it up, taking it out of your body, bypassing the liver and the kidneys, so you're taking the burden off your pore, detoxification organs, the liver and the kidneys. And it's, you know, tastes like dirt, right? It tastes, doesn't taste bad, doesn't take, taste good. I put a little apple cider vinegar in my water with it over ice, maybe a little stevia or honey to um, make it sweet and it goes right down. 
Accelerated Ancient Salt. Besides being the best tasting salt, um, this is full of 62 minerals. It helps mitochondrial health and weight loss and chronic disease because it is increasing the volume of blood so that you're, as you're detoxing, you're plumping up the blood to kick those toxins out. It's the only salt that is full of 62 mineral and it's been hand mined without explosives. Most Himalayan salts have been um, mined with explosives. So you have explosive material in that salt. And a lot of Himalayan salt isn't actually Himalayan salt. You got to know where you're getting your salt from. So this is hand mined. It helps with um, cleansing the liver as it's, it's facilitating bile production, helping break down those fats, contributing to liver health and detoxification. It's, it helps with apoptosis, because, which is the program cell death, essential for maintaining cellular balance and eliminating damaged and unhealthy cells. So it works with the acceleridine iodine to support that apoptosis. It helps with DNA repair, um, and it helps with getting rid of those excess estrogens in our body that are causing estrogen dominance. So it's a great as far as working with the accelerodyne iodine to get rid of those toxins. It's helping with intracellular hydration. That's the needed sodium and potassium on the inside and outside of the cell to get the toxins out of the cell and then nutrients in the cells. It helps with digestion and it's got scalar frequencies to um, that holds a negative charge to pull out the positively charged parasites, undigested fats and toxins out of the body. Now that is what is in the cleanse. You can add in the liver flush detox cleanse and that is also part of the ascent diet cleanse. We want to give our liver as much love as we can. I do a liver flush every eight weeks at the very um, least. I usually try to do it every four to six weeks because I feel so good and it's so easy. Um, when the liver isn't optimized, mitochondrial health, metabolism, they will all suffer. ATP goes down. And the liver is where your inactive thyroid hormone T4 converts into that T3, your active thyroid hormone. So it will also help with insulin resistance, optimizing your, your protein and fat metabolism, alleviate inflammation, help with thyroid hormones, detox the body of the radiation, toxins, excess estrogens, um, reduce that fatty liver, all of that. Then you have, as I mentioned, those stickers, the Harmonic Shield um, cell phone EMF harmonizer. You can put these on your computers or your cell phones, but what you do, it's just a little sticker. It's been shown to um, help drop the, the radio frequency absorption by 95, 97%. So is it everything? No. Should you always be on your cell phone when you've got this little sticker on it? No, but it's going to help. The HeWe. You guys, this is my new favorite technology. It is the most affordable out of all of them. It's less than $500. This thing has over 60, that is 60,000 programs. I have a client who tried it for her hot flashes within one night. It, it diminished them by, I would say, 80%. We then added in some programs for sleep and it helped with sleep. Um, I've, I have um, someone doing a parasite program on it and it's definitely kicking out some parasites. It's a portable frequency product. It, you can use it anytime, anywhere, in the office, at the gym, walking around the street. No one will know. But you just hook it up to your computer, search the items that you want to look at. Lyme disease, fat burning, thyroid, detox, liver, hair growth, sleep. You name it, it's got it. And it's got a, probably 20 to 30 programs for each item. The biocharger, now that's different. That is a much more expensive unit. Um, but it it has a, it has a platform and we've talked to the owners of it on my podcast. You can go back and look and they're coming back on, I believe in May, but it has four distinct natural energies 
and helps ground the body. And it's got, I think, about a thousand different programs. So not quite as many as the Hiwi. It's much more expensive, but it's very powerful as well. Helps with strength, stamina, energy, mental clarity. A lot of big guns in the industry. To, um, let's see. You've got Ben Greenfield. I think um, Tony Robbins has a couple of them. They are definitely worthwhile. There's also the Amp Coil, which is kind of middle of the road. It can scan your body for what's going on to give you an idea of, of what could be causing your issues and then gives you a treatment or a, a journey, I should say, to help with um, whatever you're dealing with. So that was a lot. And then what we need to do for our diet. And I just have a few minutes to, to talk about this, but you want to make sure you're prioritizing that wild animal protein. The bison, elk, deer, grass-fed beef is fine. <clears throat> wild fish, but not such the fatty fish um, if your body is having a hard time with digesting fats. These proteins provide the most nutrients out of any food in the modern world because the soils are depleted. We're not getting our nutrients from our vegetables and fruit anymore. Helps with lean muscle growth. That in turn helps with ATP and mitochondria. It stabilizes blood sugar and helps with um, providing all the nutrients without the sulfur, the oxalates, the lect lectins, histamines, all of those things that inhibit um, the metabolism and cause detoxification issues. We want to exclude the sulfur vegetables. Those are the ones, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, bro broccoli. Avoid the amyloid proteins. Those are in chicken, pork, turkey, um, conventionally raised beef. One thing else is the chicken and pork have high amounts of linoleic acid, and that is extremely inflammatory to the body. And we're going to be talking more about that. But these amyloids, um, remember, they are, they are being deposited in our brain and our body, causing gut issues and a, patho a pathogenic load increase and in insulin dysregulation. Eliminate the oxalate foods, spinach, almonds, Beer, berries, kale. I go through all of this in my accelerated food guide. You can look at that to see what foods you can eat, which there are a ton. You want to avoid high histamine foods and possibly lower your fat intake. So if you're going to increase your carbs, remember, it's not about carbs and fat. If you're going to increase your carbs, you got to lower your fat to less than 30% but it's essential to eliminate the, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, that linoleic acid, the processed foods, so much information. So most of your health issues are coming from these toxins, from the radiation. It's not from carbs, fat, proteins. It's coming from these toxins that have no calories. So we have to minimize them. We have got to open up our detox pathways, use supplements to detox the body so that we have the energy that we want to live and feel good. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in today. If you need help with your health, feel free to reach out to me um, at sarahbantahealth.com. Here to help. Join my free group coaching on Telegram. I have the link on my website. I share daily tips and tools to improve your health. And you're surrounded by amazing people. You will get your, an your questions answered and you'll learn on a daily basis. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Accelerated Health Products. And you can catch this podcast on a, over 100 platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Just search Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm on a mission to share my healing message with everyone who is ready to hear it. So please help me with that goal and share this with a few of your friends. Remember, I'm live, so make sure you subscribe and you're notified. And be sure to visit acceleratedhealthproducts.com. You can get 10% off with the code WELCOME10 on any of the supplements that we talked about today. Thanks again for joining us here and have a great week.